was said right at the beginning today, uh, we would like to think that the SKA project is an iconic project for science diplomacy in the 21st century. And to share with us that perspective on the, the, the role of SKA in science diplomacy, I want to invite Thais Geerts, who is one of the, the policy experts um, at the Square Kilometer Array organization, intimately involved in all the policy strategy and governance initiatives. And Thais also has had a long career in the Dutch public service, working um, within the Dutch ministry as well as research funding agencies. So Thais, over to you. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Dan, and thanks for the, um, for the opportunity to, to talk. It's, um, it's my first time to, to speak at the UN level, and I guess it doesn't get much higher than that, so, so bear with me while I try to, to get through my nerves and, and deliver this, this last uh, presentation uh, of the SKA project. Um, yeah, so, so I will say a few things about uh, science diplomacy. Um, I wanted to start by, by showing you this, this picture and I um, want to take you back 30 years from now, um, back to the year 1990. Um, it was the year when, actually the year after, the, 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 the wall in Berlin uh, fell and uh, in 1990, uh, the Voyager 1, the, the American spaceship, uh, had completed its mission. And, and was about to, to leave our solar, uh, solar system. And um, one, of the, um, one of the team members of the NASA team, uh, Carl Sagan, uh, requested to, to turn the, the onboard camera uh, on the Voyager 1 uh, back one last time before it, it left the, the solar system. And, and what came out was this, yeah, just this, this, this wonderful, um, really I iconic uh, photograph. Which, which came to be known as the, the pale blue dot. I'm sure many of you have seen this picture before. This is, uh, this is the Earth taken from a distance from six uh, billion kilometers. And it's, yeah, it it's just makes you think how, how tiny and, and vulnerable we, we really are. And um, uh, so, so Carl Sagan wrote a, a book with the same title a few years later and in it, he says that astronomy is a, really a humbling experience. And I, I think that this, this picture really, um, really underlines that, uh, that fact. So in the same book, um, Sagan writes these wonderful lines. He says, <clears throat> look again at this dot, that's us. On it, everyone you love, everyone you know, Every human being who ever was lived out their lives. The earth is a very small stage in a vast cosmic arena. And then in a, in a slightly darker tone, he says, think of the endless cruelties visited by the inhabitants of one corner of this pixel, from the scarcely distinguishable inhabitants of some other corner, how frequent their misunderstandings, how fervent their hatreds. And yeah, I don't want to be too dramatic on this uh, Tuesday afternoon, but simply observe the fact that uh, the earth that we live on is very often a place of, yeah, of conflict and of uh, political turmoil and the end of war. And <clears throat> I guess this is the, the, the central point of my presentation. Uh, I think that, that uh, astronomy is not only able to, to show us wonderful pictures like this, but it's also able to, to, yeah, to serve as a, as a counterpart um, to, to deal with these conflicts and uh, to deal with all the political turmoil that we see also today. Um, science diplomacy, uh, the term was coined at the beginning of this uh, century and there are many, many definitions around, but I will use this one. Um, so it's about building constructive international partnerships through scientific cooperation. Um, it's really about transnational governance, and this is why the UN and uh, the SDGs are so, so crucial as well. Um, it's more urgent, I think, than ever 
to have constructive international partnerships. Uh, the world is getting smaller every day. The, the, the connectivity uh, uh, grows, the digital connectivity grows uh, in trade and travel, at least in a, in a normal situation. Um, international and sound international relations are, are really, really crucial. Uh, you can also see it in the in the grand challenges. You know, every one of them, <clears throat> even uh, you know, if it's uh, energy uh, and the energy crisis or, or climate change, they they're all uh, things that that no country on itself can 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 solve. So um, so international relations are are really really crucial. Um, yeah, like I said, the, the the term has been coined only at the beginning. Of this uh, century, but but the uh, let's say the principle behind uh, science diplomacy has been along has been around for for a long long time already, um, and I want to point at the International Astronomical Union, which had meetings uh, throughout the 20th century, and and they they've always been uh, opportunities for for contacts between the Western world and the and the Soviet Union. And in fact, in the 1919 statutes, it was mentioned very, uh, very prominently that this is really something that the, uh, the union sought. Uh, so it mentioned to facilitate the, the relations between astronomers of different countries uh, where international cooperation uh, is necessary or useful. Oops. Um, radio astronomy provides some wonderful examples when it comes to, to science diplomacy. So, so in the Cold War, it, it really served as a, as a, let's say, an icebreaker. Um, in the early 60s, some Russian scientists involved in, in planetary missions visited the UK. Uh, vice versa, Sir Bernard Lovell <coughs> was invited to the Soviet Union to, to give some lectures. And then he discussed uh, the VLBI and, and even planned uh, joint radar observations. And this, this led to many, many collaborations and, and visits uh, between the Soviet Union and the UK uh, in the post-Khrushchev era. Um, in 68, so, so really at the high point of the, of the Cold War, uh, US radio astronomers initiated discussions with the Lebedev Physical Institute about VLBI. <clears throat> and um, yeah, as it was the high point of the Cold War, of course, there were many, many issues, including getting an atomic clock, uh, a seat on a plane from, from Stockholm to, to, to Leningrad. Um, but these issues and, and, and other technical ones, <clears throat> they were overcome. And experience were, were very successful, actually. And, and this was the first of what's, what proved to be many, uh, of, of many scientific collaborations between the US and the and the Soviet Union that, that required <clears throat> an exchange of, uh, of advanced instrumentation. So science diplomacy happening in the past, it's happening today as well. Look at the, the, the Sesame project in, in Jordan, the, the synchrotron <clears throat> light source, um, where there is Jordan, Iran, Turkey, Egypt, the Palestinian Authority, and yes, Israel is there as well. So that's that's really an inspiring example, I think. Um, of course, lots of political tensions <clears throat> on the highest level, but here they are, the, the researchers working working together. And and you can see it in the ITER project uh, as well. If you look at the, the countries listed in the logo, you can think of, of many, many examples in time where uh, yeah, there were uh, quite cold bilateral relations, but, but yet in this project, researchers from all these countries uh, work passionately together to solve these scientific uh, challenges. So <clears throat> it was happening in the past, it was happening, it's happening today, and it, it will happen in the future, and hopefully the SKA project will, will contribute to that. And I, and I say in the future, but of course the SK project has, has been around for many years already and is, is contributing uh, uh, for many years already. Um, 
as Phil Diamond said in, this morning, um, we have member states from across five continents. And what is unique about the project is that we, uh, we really surpass traditional boundaries. So, so, so we connect developing uh, worlds to more Western uh, countries. We, we surpass the boundaries between emerging science nations and the more traditional ones. So this is, this is really a unique aspect, I think, of the, of the SK project. Yeah, so, so let me end with this uh, wonderful picture again and, and, uh, and express really humbly that it is my hope that science or <clears throat> astronomy or even the SKA project will perhaps make the, the tiny earth that we live in uh, a bit more peaceful place. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Thais. Uh, I don't think there could have been a more fitting closing intervention, uh, really emphasizing the, the potential of the, the Square Kilometer Array project to, to build international friendship, foster solidarity, and, 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 and I think really, really remind us um, that, that we're all one common species, one common human, human, humankind, and of our obligations towards each other and, and towards our planet. Thank you.